This Formica Fusca Black Ant Queen has given birth to her first brood. While the workers establish their new territory in the earth, above ground, a nearby colony of Formica Sanguinea slave maker ants are on the lookout for would be victims. These ants specialize in stealing larvae from neighboring nests and raising them as their own. If the black ant colony isn't prepared for the inevitable incursion, they may be wiped out entirely. Unfortunately, the queen chose her colony's home poorly. This earth is infested with Grillatalpa grillatalpa, the European mole cricket. Growing up to 45 millimeters in length and with powerful forelegs, these beasts are masters of tunneling. The crickets have had their fill of roots for the day and are now on the hunt for protein-rich invertebrates. This queen and her brood are in imminent danger of being devoured. By working together, the ants have overwhelmed one of the funnel web spiders. She won't be causing any more trouble for the colony. Her sisters, however, still present a problem. A mole cricket is burrowing into the nest. The ants must mount a defense quickly, or their brood will be forfeit.
The colony is starving. There's not enough food to feed the new brood. There are intruders in the nest. The raiding party has arrived. The slave makers will head straight for the brood chambers. They must be stopped. The raiding party was no match for the valiant defenders. The brood remains safe for now. Mole crickets are burrowing into the nest. The ants must defend in multiple locations at once. The colony is starving. There is not enough food to feed the new brood. The slave makers are back. They can sense larvae, and they want their share. The raiding party was no match for the valiant defenders. The brood remains safe for now.
There are intruders in the nest. A mole cricket is burrowing into the nest. The ants must mount a defense quickly, or their brood will be forfeit. The slave makers are back. They can sense larvae, and they want their share. The raiding party was no match for the valiant defenders. The brood remains safe, for now. Predators are loose in the nest. The larvae must be protected. The ants will fight to the death. The Sanguinea colony seeks once again to bolster its numbers. A battalion of slave makers charge into the nest. The raiding party was no match for the valiant defenders. The brood remains safe, for now. Mole crickets are burrowing into the nest. The ants must defend in multiple locations at once. There are intruders in the nest. The colony is starving. There's not enough food to feed the new brood. Thank you. 
Predators are loose in the nest. The larvae must be protected. The Sanguinea colony seeks once again to bolster its numbers. A battalion of slave makers charge into the nest. Once again, the slave makers return to their nest with new black ant larvae to raise as their own. The raids will continue. But this Formica Fusca colony has proved its capacity to endure and grow. Eventually they will surpass their parasitic overseers, and the continued raids of the slave makers will reduce to nothing more than a mere inconvenience for the great Black Ant Empire. time already? Yes, our queen is insatiable. I'm afraid we've ran out of time. It doesn't matter if the nest isn't perfect. Run the experiment, then clear out the specimens and bleach the equipment. Yes, yes, I know. I'm doing it. And when you are finished here, I think we should have a word about your conduct around the laboratory. I think we should have a word about your conduct around the laboratory. What was that? Nothing, nothing. Starting the experiment. Good. Let me know when you have a result. Okay, my little ants, this is it. The winner will have the privilege of joining me for the ultimate test, the real final experiment. The loser will be relegated to the waste disposal. The four Macariums are connected. Let the war commence! Which colony will strike first? The Areptus finally meet! Interesting combinations. I wonder which is more effective. Quickly, my little Reptus. You wouldn't want to be caught by the finger of death! <laughs> ha! <laughs> Excellent progress, my Ereptus. Strike at your nemesis. There can be only one.
excellent progress, my Ereptus. Strike at your nemesis. There can be only one. <laughs> Perfect! I knew my reference would prevail. Now we can prepare for the real... Have you finished yet? Uh, yes. Our reptors have dominated the Forbicarium. Wonderful. I expect a full report by the end of the week. For now, you can start by clearing away. Make sure anything contaminated with that jelly goes straight to the incinerator. Yes, yes, very good. Jelly to the incinerator. The jelly is for my hands, and no one is going to take it away from you. Short sighted, simple, churlish fools! They don't understand. None of them understand. The experiment must proceed. There isn't much time. Quickly, my Rectus, into the terrarium. You'll be safe here. Is it done? Yes, yes. Look. Gone. I see. Well, good. It's about time. Anyway, I'm going to need you to make yourself available this afternoon. Apparently, a large quantity of unrefined jelly has gone missing from the overflow vessel, and Supply wants to speak with the whole group about proper checkout procedures. You wouldn't happen to know anything about it, would you? What? No! What would I want with unrefined jelly? Well, quite. What would I want indeed? <laughs> This Solenopsis Invicta Fire Ant Queen has landed on the edge of a swamp. She may be far from her native habitat, but the Fire Ants are well known for their ability to adapt. 
Competition for food will be fierce. She will need to raise an army quickly to compete with the local predators. The colony lies in the shadow of a great titan to the north, an American bullfrog. This large female has found the perfect spot to feed. Sheltered by foliage and in the path of many wandering insects and smaller amphibians, she has no reason to move on. Eventually she will need to be displaced, but for now, the fire ants have more pressing business to attend to. The ants have uncovered a group of hungry checkered beetle larvae. The soft grubs may look defenseless, but they have big jaws and appetites to match. The boggy soil surrounding the nest is lacking in nitrogen and phosphorus, nutrients vital for plants to photosynthesize and grow. To survive in this environment, some have evolved to supplement their mineral diet by trapping and dissolving invertebrate prey. Predators are loose in the nest. The larvae must be protected. There are intruders in the nest. A small colony of Fadele Morisi big-headed ants have established themselves on a hill to the west. Scavenging for seeds, aphids, and dead insects, they are unlikely to pose a threat to the Invicta colony, if left undisturbed. Many of the milkweed plants growing nearby are infested with aphids. Their honeydew excretions present an ideal, energy-rich food source for the fire ants. 
Aphids far from the nest are vulnerable, however, and are sometimes relocated closer to home where they can be better protected from predators and thieves. A six-spotted tiger beetle, Chichindala sexcutata, is on the move near the nest. Its metallic green elytra make it unmistakable, and like its other tiger beetle cousins, long legs give it the speed to chase down small arthropods with ease. A magnolia green jumping spider, Lysoman viridis, has ambushed a fire ant. It prefers to hunt on foliage, where it is less likely to be spotted by predators and prey alike. Out on the ground, it's more vulnerable, but that won't stop it from snacking on lone ants far from the safety of the nest. The ants have been attracted to secretions of nectar produced by a yellow pitcher plant. In order to feed, however, the ants must position themselves precariously over a deep vat of digestive liquid. Waxy deposits on the rim ensure that any ant that steps too far in won't be stepping out again. Puchetcha viridans, the green link spider, has set a trap under the lid of a yellow pitcher plant. Dangling precariously over the pitcher's corrosive soup, the lynx waits patiently. Time after time, insects attracted by the scent of nectar conveniently present themselves at her feet. The colony is starving. There's not enough food to feed the new brood. Defenseless caterpillars exposed on the underside of leaves are a welcome snack for the passing fire ants. The colony should take advantage while it can. Few meals surrender so willingly. The fire ants have encountered a tribe of Monomorium minimum black ants. These tiny little ants may seem feeble, but the Invicta colony would do well to treat them with caution. Although primarily scavengers, they are armed with powerful chemical secretions and have been known on occasion to invade fire ant nests.
As the sun sets, the local amphibians begin to emerge from moist crevices near the water's edge. Lone invertebrates will be picked off quickly. The ants should travel in numbers or not at all. An ant has been devoured by Eurychea quadradicitata, a dwarf salamander. It is nimble, fast, and slender enough to wiggle through tight crevices in search of food. A bombardier beetle, Brachinus altianans, is hunting for insects outside the nest. It may seem unwise for it to wander so freely amongst the large amphibians that share the swamp at night, but they would do well to leave it alone. This beetle is a master of chemical warfare. The colony is starving. There is not enough food to feed the new brood. Eastern narrow-mouthed toads patrol above ground looking for food. Ants make up 75% of their diet, so the small colony must stay alert. To make matters worse, they are excellent diggers. It's only a matter of time before one tunnels its way into the nest. have clashed with a bombardier beetle. Feeling threatened, the beetle mixes a cocktail of chemicals that react together, boil, and explode from a valve at the base of its abdomen. The fire ants and big-headed ants have met in their first skirmish. Sensing the new danger, the Morisi colony responds by awakening ancestral super-soldier genes in selected brood, feeding them until their heads are engorged with muscle. An ant has fallen victim to a carnivorous plant. The big-headed ants now have a super-soldier caste to justify their name. 
At huge economic cost to the colony, these frenzied champions have been raised for one purpose. To crush the fire ants. and toads retire to their damp alcoves to wait out the sun. Only the great bullfrog remains. She sits patiently on her throne, waiting for the next meal to wander by. The ants must fight. A raiding party of big-headed ants are stealing aphids. They must be stopped. Monomoria Minimum Colony is almost defeated. The Invictor Army must press their advantage. Thank you. 
The little black ants fought to the last to defend their queen. Now the Invicta colony will enjoy the spoils of war. Defenseless larvae from the vanquished colony will be carried home and fed to the victor's own hungry brood. The colony is starving. There is not enough food to feed the new brood. The battle has begun. Big-headed super soldiers are leading a raid on the Invicta colony. The ants must fight. The queen is in imminent danger. The queen has fallen. Unable to amass adequate numbers to meet the perils of the swamp, her passing was almost inevitable. 
she should never have come here. This fire ant queen has traveled for miles on her nuptial flight, finally landing atop a sandy mound deep in the swamp. The vantage point might seem like an ideal home, but it may be short-lived. This whole area is liable to flooding, and nearby rainfall is already causing the groundwater to rise. Exhausted and without her wings, the queen is unable to move on alone. But if she can amass enough daughters in time, the colony as a whole may stand a chance. Many nearby creatures have already been washed out of their homes by the rising water. A lucky few have been deposited on the shores east of the nest. As more arrive, tensions will rise. There isn't space here for everyone. False bombardier larvae are burrowing through the earth surrounding the nest. They are already large and will hold their ground against small groups of ants. Predators are loose in the nest. The larvae must be protected.
The boggy earth at the base of the mound is now saturated, and as night approaches, the water begins to creep closer. The new arrivals will rush to higher ground, heading straight for the nest. There is nowhere else to go. A great blue skimmer, Libellula vibrans, hunts overhead. This fantastic aerial predator shouldn't cause any trouble for the ants. That is, unless it decides to land in their way. Food is abundant, but as the flood water begins to rise, the ants will quickly lose access to the lower lands. An ant has found itself entangled on the sticky tentacle of a dwarf sundew. As it tries to struggle free, more tentacles are drawn in, drowning the victim in thick mucilage. The inundation has slowed, and fewer creatures are washing up to the east. The ants have an opportunity to explore for food, but there are other dangers at night. Moist-skinned amphibians have come out to take advantage of this new water world, harvesting lost insects displaced from their burrows. Thank you. 
the battle has begun. Pinewood's tree frog, Gila femoralis, has wandered into the trail. This one has taken a break from mate calling for a quick meal, and it seems that ants are on the menu. The colony is starving. There is not enough food to feed the new brood. Continued rainfall is about to bring another torrent flushing through the bog, carrying with it a slew of ill-tempered arthropods.
There are intruders in the nest. The battle has begun. Predators are loose in the nest. The larvae must be protected. The ants must fight. colony is starving. There's not enough food to feed the new brood. With nowhere to drain, the floodwater creeps ever nearer to the nest. Already cramped and irritated, a panic ensues and the refugees scramble for higher ground.
The Queen is in imminent danger. Weakened by relentless attacks, receding territory, and diminishing food sources, the Invicta colony could no longer hold out. As swamp-dwelling invertebrates poured into the nest, the guards fell one by one.